We're asked to find the equation of a plane that contains a given point, which we have drawn right there, as well as the given line in parametric equation form, which is this line right here. Now we know that in order to find the scalar equation of the plane, we need two things. We need a point, which luckily we have, so that's pretty easy right there. But then what we also need is the so-called normal vector. And a normal vector is going to be a vector that passes perpendicularly through the plane. It's a little bit hard for me to draw this, but I'll give it a shot. This is going to be that normal vector right there, and it is indeed perpendicular to the plane. So it would form like a 90 degree angle with the plane. We don't have that. That's the great challenge, is to figure out what that normal vector is. Once we have the normal vector, along with the given point, we just plug it into this equation for the scalar equation of a plane, and we are in business. So again, the great challenge becomes to find this normal vector right here. And so we're going to adopt a four-step strategy, and we will see why this is going to work as it sort of unfolds. In the first step, what we're going to do is simply find a point on this given line, which we have highlighted in yellow. You can do that by selecting any value that you want for t. You could plug in t is equal to zero, you could plug in t is equal to a thousand. And it's going to be easiest, of course, to make t equal to zero. So this will give us a second point that we can work with. And let's go ahead and plug zero into those parametric equations above. So x would equal four minus zero, which is four. Then we have y is equal to two times zero minus one, and that's gonna give us negative one. And then z is going to equal negative three times zero, which indeed is zero. So these x, y, and z coordinates right here would be the point on this line. We don't have to plot it to any degree of scale or accuracy, we'll just arbitrarily put it right there, that point will be four comma negative one comma zero. The next thing that we need to do is step two, and it says to draw a vector from the given point, which is that blue one, through the point on the line. So we're just gonna draw a vector originating from the given point going through that point on the line. We will call that vector A and we will need to figure out the components of that vector. And that's relatively straightforward because you probably remember from an earlier section that to represent vector A would mean to take the difference between the X coordinates, the Y coordinates, and the Z coordinates. And when we're saying X, Y, and Z coordinates, we're referring to these two points. So perhaps we can call this X1, Y1, and Z1, and then this new point that we just found would be our x2, y2, z2. And again, to find the vector representation for vector a, we just find the difference between the x, y, z coordinates. So make sure you subtract from the second point to the first point. So you gotta make sure it's x2 minus x1. So it's gonna be four minus three, which gives us one. And then you're gonna have negative one minus five, which is negative six. And then you're gonna have zero minus negative one. Be careful there, zero minus negative one is zero plus one. So that's just gonna be one. So that's the vector representation of that line right there. Now we'll notice that the given line, the one in yellow, will have a vector representation as well. So go back to the parametric equations and what you're gonna do is look at the coefficients of the variable t. So for example, here you have a coefficient of negative one, over here you have a coefficient of two, and then over here it's a coefficient of negative three. That is the vector for that yellow line. We'll call that vector b, and we'll just take those coefficients again. So that's gonna be negative one, two, and negative three. They're basically called direction numbers. They kind of tell us the direction in the x, y, and z axis that that yellow line is moving. So this is indeed the vector for that yellow line. And then again, we also have the vector for that other line that we drew. So what we will now do is cross the vector that we figured out, we called it vector A, with the vector representing the line, which was vector B. And here's the beautiful thing. When we cross this vector here, vector A, with the vector representing the line, we will automatically get that normal vector. Perhaps I can draw it in a different position to show you what we're talking about. So right where those lines would sort of intersect, we would get a normal vector 
once we cross them together. So anytime you cross two vectors, you're going to get a third vector that runs perpendicular to the original vectors. So that means that this third vector, this normal vector, would run perpendicular to the plane as well, because vector A and vector B lie on the plane. So when we cross them, that normal vector will indeed be perpendicular to the plane. So that's the key right there. Really, step three is the most important here. And so we're going to go and we're going to cross them. So this is a whole little problem in and of itself. So let's just rewrite the vectors. We have vector A is 1, negative 6, and 1. And then vector B is equal to negative 1, 2, and negative 3. And again, we're going to find the cross product. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here is the setup for the cross product. We basically just put sort of the x, y, z components of each vector horizontally. This is vector A, this is vector B. And to do the cross product, whoopsies, we're gonna have to basically do some determinants. So for example, when we do the cross product, the first thing you wanna do is cover up the i column. And that leaves you with a two by two sort of matrix. And you're gonna to wanna to find the determinant of that little two by two matrix. And that's pretty easy. What you do is you just sort of cross multiply. You do those two numbers multiplied, so you're going to get, obviously, 18. And then you're going to also multiply those two numbers, which gives you 2. And then you simply subtract them. So that would be sort of the first result of our cross product for the i hat direction or the x direction. For the y or the j hat direction, what you're going to do is cover that column up. That's going to give you a different 2 by 2 matrix. Again, you do the determinant. So you're going to do 1 times negative 3, which is negative 3. And then you're going to do negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. And then you're going to subtract them. Also, and this is really important for this middle component, this sort of y component, make sure you negate the result. That's very important. Don't forget that negative sign right there. That is crucial. And then to get our z component, we're going to kind of cross off the k hat column right here and do one more determinant. We're going to have 1 times 2, which is 2 minus negative 1 by negative 6, which is positive 6. So now all we have to do is clean this up. Now remember, the cross product between those two vectors gives us a third vector that is perpendicular to both of those vectors, which is indeed perpendicular to the plane, so therefore it's the normal vector. We simplify, we get 16. Let's see, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, but then negate that, so you get positive 2. And then 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So there's your normal vector. We also had a point on the plane. We can call that P naught. And if we go back up, we recall that P naught had the coordinates of 3, 5, negative 1. 3, 5, negative 1 are the coordinates. And now we revisit the equation of a plane, the scalar equation. There it is right there. And we can just label things again here to keep it straight. The point is going to be our x naught, y naught, z naught. And then the normal vector will have these sort of direction numbers here, little a, little b, little c, and we just plug them in. So here we go. We're going to have our little a of 16 times x minus our x naught plus our little b times y minus our y naught and then plus little c. That's going to be a minus 4, be careful there, times z minus negative 1, so that'll become plus 1 equals zero. And that's perfectly fine. Your professor might accept that as a final answer, but we can do a little bit better by distributing all of these di direction numbers here. So we're going to have 16x minus 48 plus 2y minus 10 minus 4z minus 4 equals zero. Then we can combine all the constants. So here, here, and here. So negative 48 minus 10 minus 4 is negative 62. And then you can add that 62 over. So you would have 16x plus 2y minus 4z is equal to 62. And then if you want, you can divide everybody by 2 to simplify it even more. So you'll have 8x plus y minus 2z is equal to 31. That would be the final equation of the plane. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But if not, no worries. Thank you for taking the time to watch regardless.